let's give our kids the magic and the superpowers to create anything, to turn their ideas into reality and create infinite possibilities. As a kid, I loved to make stuff, and who didn't? I wanted to design the next Ferrari, and I still do. And I was obsessed with Lego, and I still am. And just like every other kid, I wanted to build a rocket which could fly me to the moon. My mum took me to the geekiest art classes on the weekend, which I absolutely loved. And what I really enjoyed was actually building a product, something tangible, which I was really proud of, and it made people smile. So I went to university, and I studied the most exciting course in the world, actuarial studies. <laughs> I was a good Jewish boy. So after too many years, I finally finished my degree, and I went into the corporate world. 12 months later, I left, and I ended up working for a family friend. And I spent the next five years working for my family friend, who, learning all, everything about software and, entre and entrepreneurship how I could create one piece of software which we could then distribute around the world and make an impact to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And it was actually incredible. Like, my passion for building Lego, I could actually find with building a piece of software. I learned about what customers needed and how to find the solutions to actually do that. And it was, it was a game changer for me. It totally changed my life. And then, at the same time, my cousin had an accident and he ended up as a quadriplegic. And it gave me the opportunity to meet Marita Cheng. Marita, who was 21 at the time, was building robotic arms, robotic arms to help people with disabilities. And at 21, she was literally changing people's lives. She had that mindset of creating anything. And it didn't matter if it was the crazier, craziest idea ever. She would go out and, and do it. From there, Marita went on and built RoboGals and inspire, has inspired tens of thousands of females into engineering. And now she's built an app which helps the blind navigate through the world using artificial intelligence. And what I realized was that she just simply had that mindset that she could create anything. And not enough kids do have that. At the same time as all of that going on, you know, kids, family, friends, cousins were constantly coming up to me and saying, Ben, I have the best idea ever, the Uber for this, the Airbnb for that, can you help me create it? thinking that I knew what I was really doing. And it really made me wonder, and I worked out that we're not teaching our kids how to even get started, how to brainstorm, how to experiment, how to take an idea and work out what would be the, next, the first step to get started. But what would this world look like if our kids knew where to get started? Marita mentions that she didn't find out about engineering until she was in year 12. Imagine if she missed that day at school or imagine if she started when she was six. This is Anne Maccasini. Anne became passionate about science when she was six. At 16, she was speaking to a friend in the Philippines and realized that her friend was actually failing at school because she didn't have any light after sunset. She didn't have the electricity that we have, all of us in this room, where we can flick a switch and turn the light on. So Anne had two, two options, either she could feel sorry for her friend, or she could find a solution. So using thermoelectrics, Anne actually created a flashlight, a torch, which works from the power of your hand at 16. There are one billion people in this world who do not have electricity like we do. And a 16-year-old was able to create a product which could impact a billion people. So we really need to give the superpowers to our kids. We need to teach our kids to code. It makes sense. Coding is step one to actually building a product, something which our kids can feel proud of, something which they can build straight away and distribute and have their friends play around with and build the engagement, something which they can take home and show their friends. And the best part about coding is when we teach kids to code, we're not teaching them to be developers. We're teaching them to build a product. We're teaching them to have fun, and we're teaching them to, get it, to become engaged. And with coding, not everyone, as I said, not everyone needs to be a developer. We have hipsters, hackers, and hustlers. <laughs> Putting kids at a young age into that environment, we can learn really quickly where they want to go. Whether that be hipsters who want to go and build, who want to design something which will go and work for customers and find solutions, or the coders who want to understand the computational thinking and the logic and how to break huge problems down and actually solve them, or the hustlers who want to go out there and pitch their ideas and find and build relationships. All of those skills will help any industry in the world. 
And I know this is true. At Code Camp, we've taught more than 10,000 kids to code over the past 24 months. 10,000 kids between 7 and 13 years old who are building products and building confidence and building their skill sets and just growing. Whether that be then going back into the classroom and having the confidence to try new ideas, the confidence to make mistakes, the confidence to the chutzpah, you know, learn, just, just being able to give it a shot. And that's really what we're teaching. This is Yiming. Yiming's eight years old. We'd hire him tomorrow if his mum didn't want him to finish primary school and high school. <laughs> but he's proof that if we teach our kids at a young age something incredible, give them the skills to actually go out and create stuff, they'll do it. And we need to start at a young age. Because imagine if we taught our kids how to actually build a rocket to the moon. Where would this world go and what would it look like in 10 years' time? Thank you.